if this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it. All right. And I could be speaking phys- phys- uh, figuratively. Okay. I could be speaking literally. It's a matter of interpretation. We uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. When I when I describe this, when you look in the city of Chicago, there are nine children who've died by gun violence, by black on black gun violence with uh, from June 20th all the way to today. And you're talking about even with the Atlanta child murders, there were 28 kids who were who died during in two years. You're talking about a month and you have nine black kids and the Black Lives Matter movement has said nothing about this. What does kind that of have thing? to do you know, with equality though, it, Terry? I have to tell I don't understand what that has to do with equality because they're they're Listen, there's crime. There are people in those communities who are, those people aren't just being nonchalant about, about gun violence. I lived in Chicago. There are many people who are working in those communities to try to get rid of the gun violence. It's, the gun culture in this, in this country is prevalent, but I don't understand what that has to do with a movement that's for equality for black people. It's, it, it, there, it's not mutually exclusive that if you care about equality for black people, that somehow you're going to stop um, random violence or, unfortunately, kids from being shot. It just seems like apples and oranges. You know, it, 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 it's not that way. You know, this is the thing, Don. You know, Black people need to hold other Black people accountable. I said this the same thing. If we, this is a, a, the Black America's version of the Me Too movement. If anything is going to change, we ourselves need to look at our own communities and look at each other and say, this thing cannot go down. And, and this is the thing too, there are a lot of great, great people there who are held hostage, who are held hostage by people who literally are, are, are running these neighborhoods with violence and then claiming that Black Lives Matter. When you look at the parents of these little kids who are mentioning saying, hey man, why aren't they speaking up for me too? And then this is what I'm saying, it's, it, when I look at, this whole thing about, you know, it's about who is controlling the narrative. It's, not, it, it's got to be all Black Lives Matter. And what's happened is that because I even challenged it, because I even questioned or, and warned okay, people, Terry, I, I became sick. Like, I, if I, I told get you it. to wear a mask, but, program, Terry, they want to kick you out. You're, you're a high-profile person. You're writing things out there. You know you're going to get backlash. You know people are going to respond to what you're saying on Twitter. So I just, I don't think you should be surprised by that. I, you know, I have a, a skin as tough as an armadillo because of what I do. And I think maybe you should adapt that. But here's, here's what I have to say. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement was started because it was talking about police brutality. If you want an all Black Lives Matter movement that talks about gun violence in communities, including, you know, black communities, then start that movement with that name. But that's not what Black Lives Matter is about. It's not an all-encompassing. That the Texas uh, separatist, Texan separatist, uh, people who want Texas to secede from the union, uh, they have ties to the Kremlin. We know that the Kremlin has um, invested into the secessionist movement. And by that, I mean there was a Russian activist by the name of Alexander Ionov who recently um, went to Texas and he did some work with um, Texas secessionists. And Ionov is, I want to say he's uh, the leader of an organization that is actually backed by the Kremlin. And it says here that Ionov runs the anti-globalization movement of Russia, a group that helps organize secession movements across the West and which has received financing from the Kremlin in the past. We also know that the Kremlin has been involved in stoking anti-Spanish sentiment in Catalonia and working with Catalonian nationalists in order to help their movement to, sep- to fragment from Spain, essentially fragmenting the EU. Um, We also know for a fact that in the 1920s, 1930s, the Soviet Union invested a bunch of money into the black separatist movement, the black communist separatist movement. And there's a quote that I want to read to you guys. This is a quote from Ozzy.com. 
And it says here, in the late 19th and early 20th century, there was every reason for black Americans, particularly in the Jim Crow South, to envision being citizens of another country, one either overseas or of their own creation. And as Theodore Draper covers in American communism and Soviet Russia, while black nationalist Marcus Garvey was pushing for a permanent black homeland in Africa during the early 1920s, a black communist visionary named Cyril Briggs was advancing his plan for a colored, autonomous state in sparsely settled western states like Nevada. American communists like Briggs, however, were not able to find a way to make use of the discontent which Garveyism fed on, says Draper, and so Mother Russia, in the form of the Communist International Organization, or Comintern, decided to get involved. Comintern approved a $300,000 fund for propaganda purposes in black America and key African American leaders and communist sympathizers were invited to Russia to be wooed by Lenin and other Soviet officials inside the Kremlin. One of those trained in Moscow was Lovett Fort Whitman, a Harlem Bellman turned political activist whom Time Magazine called the reddest of the blacks. What's also very interesting is that last year it was revealed that a very influential oligarch in Russia by the name of Yevgeny Prigozhin, who is very well tied to the Kremlin, um, he had a number of associates who actually talked about manipulating and exploiting African Americans by radicalizing them against the US government. So we know for a fact that Russia has an interest in really stoking that African American anger against the US government in order to destabilize the Union. We uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories.